Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the camera store and today we're talking about the Nikon Z7. We've had a ton of time with this camera since it was released. We've talked to lots of pros, got some feedback, and we want to show you what this camera is all about. So Brendan, hit it with the montage. Now, Ev and I were lucky enough to be at the Nikon launch event in New York last year. Now, this camera features 45.7 million effective pixels, built-in image stabilized sensor, and up to nine frames continuous shooting. So this camera has been out for quite some time, so all the specs are out there. So we're gonna focus more on the real world usage of this camera. Yeah, now before we get into that, I think it's really important to note that this is actually not the first mirrorless system from Nikon. Dave and I were around in the camera <laughs> business when the Nikon 1 series was out. There was the J1, the V1, V1. which were really like consumer mirrorless cameras. But they had some interesting uh, points to them. They had phase detection on the sensor and some things that were inevitably part of the Nikon Z system. Now they've taken a lot of things from their DSLR line to appeal to the DSLR shooters. And we think there's some really smart decisions there. Yeah, if you're a D850 user, for instance, you know, you're gonna feel right at home with this camera. Yeah, it has the same sensor with some different implementations as the D850, so image quality is going to be really similar. Now we've had a lot of shooting experience, as Dave said, from shooting travel, portraiture, sports, yep. we did some astrophotography, <laughs> and we're seeing some of the merits to it, but as Dave was saying, there are some concerns that photographers have had, and we want to address some of those things. The Nikon D850 is a flagship camera from Nikon and it's fantastic. Now, if you're coming from that, you're gonna notice a few big differences. Certainly the size is one thing. You have a lot less real estate on the Z system, so you don't have as many custom buttons, which I kinda of like. You have to go into the menu a little bit more than I'd like than having a dedicated button. Now, the D850 has different tracking modes in its autofocus system. You do have tracking with this, but I hate how they've implemented it. You have to push the OK button to kinda of get into it, then set your autofocus point on the subject you want to track, push the shutter button down, and then it tracks really well. But I hate the ergonomics of where this OK button is. It's usable, but I really don't like the ergonomics of implementing that. Now with this new firmware update, they have made one of the biggest changes, yes. which is adding eye detect autofocus. And this is really exciting because in that same tracking mode, if it detects the face and the eye, it's going to track it automatically. So you don't have to hit OK if you're in that mode. Well, Dave's been busy shooting track and field today. Brendan and I headed over to a cool exhibit in Calgary called Chroma at Cell Center Mall, where we were able to meet up with a model, Cassandra, to test out the eye autofocus. Now, this feature came about with the new 2.0 firmware update. Now, so far in our test with Cassandra, we saw that it is able to find an eye. Now, it's not necessarily as responsive when the subject is further away, but when they fill your frame more, it does a really good job of finding the eye, and it will automatically lock onto whichever one is closest so as your model turns their head from side to side it's going to pick whichever one is closer to the camera we did notice sometimes that the autofocus landed more on the eyelashes instead of the pupil of the eye now the great thing about this tool in general for portrait photography is that it allows you to focus more on your composition and your lighting and your other aspects of your portrait while making sure that that focus is really gonna be tack sharp on the subject's eye. So for shooting portraits, I think this is a really good choice. I'm loving the image quality. I think skin tone's really nice, they're really contrasty. Now, of course, if you're a DSLR user, I still think the biggest question that a lot of people wanna know is how does it perform against the D850? Now, we can tell you that in our experience, the 3D tracking autofocus still works better for fast moving subjects. But if you're someone that likes the exposure pre view mode and you want to be able to see what you're getting if you're shooting in live view on the d850 it's not going to perform as well as the tracking and autofocus on the z7 the z7 performs a lot better and of course when you get that exposure preview mode it's really hard to go back to optical now of course that's not to say that you can't shoot fast action uh, with the z7 dave's been shooting it all day long and so let's check in with him and see how it's going all right, so we're at my daughter's track meet today, and it's a really good place to put a camera through its pace and see how well it autofocuses. So I'm quite impressed with the autofocus on this camera. As my daughter runs up to do the high jump, the bar kind of gets in the way of her face at one point, but the camera maintains focus on her all the way through the jump. 
The Z series has a great viewfinder. It's an electronic viewfinder that features 3.69 million dots of resolution. And that's a welcome addition to this camera because based on a day like today, even though this rear screen is articulating, it's basically useless. So I'm using the, the viewfinder to actually review my images and go through my menu systems as well. So this camera only has a single card slot and that really sort of rubs people the wrong way. It uses the XQD card format and also the new CF Express card. Now I like the XQD card format myself. I find them very robust, incredibly fast. And we don't have to worry about any kind of buffering because of the card. So my battery is almost dead and I've been shooting quite a bit so I don't have a complaint about the battery. What I would like to see is a battery grip for this which would give me two batteries which double my shooting time but also give me a lot more comfortable grip if I want to shoot anything vertical. So I've been doing a mixture of face detect and also the tracking focus to see what works best in certain situations. And I find both work quite well. Um, as my daughter is running towards me it easily finds her face and it follows it really accurately. Now some people complain about the lag of mirrorless cameras. I'm not experiencing any of that today. I'm able to get those decisive moments and uh, it's not an issue for me. So today we have great access to all these different events. So I'm choosing the 70 to 200, which is kind of the bread and butter sport shooting lens, especially when you got this kind of access. Now I have to use the FTZ adapter with the new Z series because we don't have a native mount 70 to 200 or anything really long and it works really well. I can't complain at all. I think it works just as well as the native glass that it comes with. <laughs> Why are you guys at the top of a hill? Because we're enjoying this nice shade. I wish I had a lot more shade today. I am you burnt to a crisp. Really I didn't burnt. put nearly enough sunscreen on today. Um, if you guys have any sunburn remedies, put them in the comments down below because I'll be needing them. Yes. So besides your sunburn that you got <laughs> today, um, how did you feel about the overall comfort and usability of this camera while you're shooting in the field? So I do like the size and weight of this camera. Even with the 70 to 200 on it, it's been a pleasure to use. And I do like the tracking autofocus and the eye focus. I've been using that a lot today. It's very reassuring, especially with fast action, that I don't need to worry about keeping an autofocus point or, or a cluster of points hovering over top of the subject I want in focus. I can give some responsibility to the camera to look after that and I can just worry about composition. Yeah. Now, we wanted to hear from a couple other people on what they thought the usability and the ergonomics were on the Z7. So we talked to Rob Galbraith, as promised, who's a legendary camera reviewer of yesteryear. He's reviewed hundreds of cameras on his old website, robgalbraith.com. And so we talked to him to see what he had to say about the Z7. So I just heard that you recently sold your Nikon 850 and picked up a Nikon Z7. Now that's a huge change for anybody to make. So what was it about the Z7 that made you let go of that D50? Well, my decision was really based on the fact that I'm primarily shooting live theater these days as well as portraiture. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty big departure from what I was doing say 10 years ago where I was primarily shooting sports. Right. And so when shooting, shooting live theater, that means I'm using a lot of really large aperture lenses, f1.4, um, f1.8 lenses, and critical focus is, is the most important thing to me, to be able to photograph subjects that are either static or moving just a little bit and making sure that I'm getting the, the, those pictures crispy sharp. And the fact is the Z7 or the Z6 simply does a better job of that than really any digital SLR I've ever used, including the D850. D850 is not bad, not at all but it, I was finding that I was missing just a few too many uh, pictures to slight focus error, and that problem goes away with the, with the Z7 and Z6 almost entirely. Now it was great hearing Rob's opinions on this camera. Now it is obvious it's a very versatile camera, capable of shooting everything from portraits, product, landscape, and of course sports. Yeah, now one subject matter that we're really curious about is how this camera would perform for astrophotographers. And it's obviously a type of photography that takes a lot of patience, a lot of dedication in order to get great shots. You have to have the sky cooperate with you. So we waited patiently <laughs> for a photographer named Monica Deviat to take us out to photograph the night sky of the Rocky Mountains. So what do you normally shoot with? So I have the Nikon D810 and for Astro I usually use the 14-24 to f2.8 lens. It's a great lens for Astro and landscapes. Cool, so we're going to adapt that with the FTZ adapter. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's take some photos. Awesome, let's do it.
So it doesn't surprise me at all that looking at the back of the camera, you're obviously taking stunning photos. And of course, the stuff that you took in the wintertime was really great too. What did you think of it? So I'd say it's a very easy camera to use for Astro. But personally, I'd be sticking with a DSLR for now. Uh, the first time I took out the Z7 was in December for the Geminids meteor shower. And I went through two and a half batteries on the Z7 in a time like the D810 didn't even go through one. And they were shooting approximately the same, like time lapses essentially, to catch as many meteors as possible. But I mean, the Z7 doesn't really have any native astro lenses. The feel is a lot different. It seems very delicate to me. Um, <laughs> especially like I like to adventure and I try and be careful with my cameras, but you know. <laughs> you just worry about it. Yeah. Overall, it's really clear that Nikon put some really good intention and development behind this camera system to really flow seamlessly with their DSLR lineup. Now we are still early into this line of, of cameras, so they don't have very many native lenses, but we're going to see that come. We're going to see more and more lenses available yeah, for more it. accessories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and with the new lens mount and the new flange distance that's so short, we're seeing the best quality optics and the potential for the best quality optics we've ever seen from Nikon. Yeah, it gives them a lot more flexibility with design, and we're seeing them take advantage of some of those things, even down to some of their, their kit lenses that they're pairing with the cameras. Yeah, this 24-70 to 70 that comes in the kit is great. The edge-to-edge -edge sharpness is fantastic. Yeah, now when it comes to ergonomics, I think we agree that this camera feels really good in your hand. Sure, there could be some more customizability and some features that are in, say, the D850. And I think that really boils down to the fact that Nikon's giving you choice. The Nikon D850 is still a really good DSLR camera, but if you prefer the mirrorless system, you like having that exposure preview where you have good autofocus, um, then a mirrorless camera might be the way to go. And we're seeing with firmware, this is very exciting. You know, look what they did. This is a completely different camera. It feels like a different camera with the new firmware than it did on the launch. Yeah, and it's really great that they're following that trend of actually updating features with firmware. And so for photographers, that's really good news. It means that their camera will continue to upgrade and they don't necessarily have to buy a new camera every 18 months or two years to get the latest and greatest features. Yeah, so I really still enjoy using this camera. I have all these cameras to choose from. I like playing with this one a lot. Yeah, now we know that there's a lot of you out there that have already bought a Z7, maybe a Z6, and you've had your own experience with it. We'd really like to hear what you think of it. And let us know what you think of our review too by commenting below. Yeah, make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so we can catch you again really soon. See ya.